Tansen, isn't that just too materialistic? I got an assignment for billions. That's it. I don't have assignments for hundreds of thousands of dollars. I got that. I don't have assignments for millions. I got that. I got assignments for billions. If you don't assign your money, it's going to take its own assignment. And most of the time, it go get lost. Today on Living by Faith. With trust. Yes, hallelujah. And he just uses this to reveal how you trust him. And you can say whatever you want to say. And you can get as mad as you want to get with me. But I didn't create this system. God created this. And he's trying to use this illustration to show you it's never been about your money. The scripture, okay, bear with me because a lot of stuff that I will discuss, I've been over uh, before and I will deliberately repeat things because repetition is the bedrock of retaining information, retention. When, when, you, when you can retain, uh, uh, when you can, when you can, have a word repeated over and over again, it, it fortifies your ability to, to retain them. Because I promise you, some of you are starting to catch on to the new visitor song, aren't you? Yes. Yes. I, I didn't say all of you, Lord Jesus. I, I said, but some of you. Yes. We are well, you are welcome. The spirit of faith, you are welcome. You, you, you're not even paying that much attention to it right now, but the fact that you are hearing it over and over again, and that is one of the strengths of advertisement, if they can get you to hear what they are talking about over and over again, they know that when you go into the grocery store, that commercial is going to start play, uh, playing in your psyche. And that's why you pick up this Tide instead of the store brand because they've been telling you Tide will get the stain out. You know what I'm saying? I receive. Yeah. And so I will deliberately go over information because I understand some things concerning your psyche that will assist you to live the God kind of life. Because get a hold of this, as a man thinks, as a man thinks in his heart, so is that man. And if I can keep you thinking a certain kind of way, I can ultimately get you to live that kind of way. Good God from Zion. So there should be, oh, what is that word? There should be, uh, mm, what is it? There should be a, a unity. There should be, there should be a consistency. So you've been hearing that. That's why you were able to connect to it. Now, now I let it slip, and that's what Hebrews talks about. Hebrews talks about, you got to be careful. Hebrews chapter number two, verse one, it talks about, you got to be careful not to just, uh, uh, leave certain scriptures uh, unattended to because it's possible for you to allow them to slip. But, but Hebrews also talks about that there should be a consistency that, that what? Some of y'all remember that, that what? Runs through us all. Turn to your neighbor and say there, there should be a consistency that, that runs through us all. Like, like, like as it, as it, uh, uh, relates to, to marriage, Pastor Jerome, there should be a consistency 
concerning the principles of marriage that runs through us all. There should be a consistency of raising our children that, that runs through us all. There should be a consistency of, of giving that, that runs through us all. There, there should be a consistency in every area of our house, Mr. Perry, that runs through us all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So then it would be my responsibility as leader of this fine ministry, I thought I was going to get a better amen than that, to ensure or to make sure that everything that I discuss based upon the word of God that's been established in my life, that that it is something that is conveyed and exemplified and not just Didi and I's life, but in every partner of this ministry. Amen. As the pastor goes, so should the people. Amen. Amen. And it does matter who you connected to. Yeah. Some of y'all hanging out, okay, some people, <laughs> and, and I don't get it. They talk about certain things and don't have it themselves. How you going to talk to me about something and you don't have it yourself? It would seem to me that you would have a better time in convincing me that what you are talking about works if you were like a partaker of what you're talking about. Amen. Like I'm justified in talking about wealth because what I'm telling you about, you can clearly see in my life. I'm justified talking about marriage and raising children because you can clearly see it in my life. Somebody, somebody broke standing before you telling you how wealthy you can be. I'm like, you need to try your own product. Oh, I'm, okay, all right. The worst part about it, some people, Paul, ain't got sense enough not to go with them. If I was selling a weight loss product, <laughs> some of y'all would be looking. Like, have you tried it? <laughs> Come on, tell the truth and shame the devil. Have you? T you would be like, oh, Pastor, with all due respect, what's your waistline? <laughs> My little grandkids was bouncing on me the other day and, 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 and felt up here in this area. And they, they say, oh, gee. I said, what, baby? She said, men aren't supposed to have boobies. <laughs> that ain't right. I, I pushed her off. Get off me. <laughs> Can't stand them, little girl. They, they in my closet. I took off my shirt. They said, ugh. <laughs> you can't laugh at you. Stop laughing at others. <laughs> what I'm saying to you is that, Camille, watch this. There should be some evidence. I was holding my time and my offering that I hold every single month. And I'm looking, I'm saying, God, I am so grateful. I'm giving every month more than I was making a year. To me, if I were you, I would be worth listening to. If it were just to find out how you give in one month more than you make in a year. Yes. The same way I can eat an elephant. One bite at a time. 
Jesus. This whole thing has started, Sister Wendy, little by little. Progression over the years. I'm there now. I've watched this process, but I'm not where I really want to be. You understand? Because where I'm going is far better than where I am. And some of y'all don't stick to stuff long enough to even see the process of it. You got to jump. You, you got to move. God is moving. God ain't moved you nowhere. You just have become. Just like when I planted that seed and I come back three days later, I'm looking like, I guess it doesn't work. <laughs> the reason why I gave you seed and asked you to plant seed is to stir up the order of things in your spirit so that you can see a physical process that has come out of the spiritual process that will literally give you evidence. If you go ahead and follow this thing, here is the visible conveying to you the invisible. Yes. I'm going to be enjoying basil on my salads in a few more weeks when some of y'all are going to have to spend money to go to the grocery store when I gave you seed. The seed was not designed just to give you basil seed. It was to get you to see. It has so stirred my faith. So now every time I'm giving something, I think about that little planter that I set up in my kitchen windowsill. Isn't it up there, Dad? That thing, Dad, I'm talking. Is he asleep? <laughs> You don't become like Bishop, boy. Dad, the look over there, and he'll be chopping it up real soon. He'll be chopping it up for us to enjoy. Dad, you enjoy seeing that process? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Overwhelmed by your enthusiasm. Let me, let me talk to you concerning the scripture about this law. Okay, but imagine this first. What if all of us were so like-minded? Yeah. Yeah. What if everybody thought like I think concerning giving? There would not be one God robber among us. And God is saying, Bring me just a dime. One of, one of uh, uh, my associates in ministry, he wrote this incredible book on, and, and, and I got to just be perfectly frank with you. I haven't read the entire thing. I kind of thumbed through it, but the title alone of it just, just, ministered to me. He says, God is not worth a dime. That didn't interest you or intrigue you or at least get your attention. I thought, here's what I thought. I thought you would say, mmm. You know, when I said the title of the book, I thought you would say, mmm, or at least, whoa. Turn to your neighbor and say, he ain't getting none of that. <laughs> Y'all fooled me real good. You really did. <laughs> but think about it. Every time you withhold your tithe, that's what you tell God. Okay, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> you're saying, God, you're not worth a dime. You're saying your phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're going to make sure that cell is on. You used to call me on my cell phone. <laughs> is that a good song or no good song? Yeah. Is, is, it, is it Ratchet? Yeah. It's Ratchet. Yeah. That's the only part I know, I promise you. <laughs> like, hello from the other side. 
That's, that's the only part I know. <laughs> and when I hear that, I hear people who haven't received Jesus. Yeah. Everything becomes spiritual to me. When I hear that, I hear people who have not received Jesus, and I'm saying, hello from the other side. And that's not even funny when it comes to eternity. Mm. But if all of us were like-minded concerning giving, that's okay. Let me show you something. Uh, go to Philippians 2, because we've been down this road before. Let's look at verse number one. This, this entire chapter is applicable for every area of your life. Here's what I want you to start thinking like. I want you to start having these thoughts. That you are setting yourself to pay off somebody else's car. You're setting yourself to pay off, Omari, someone else's mortgage. God asked me a very intriguing question. I promise you I was minding my business going there. He, he literally walks up to me and said, have you ever thought about paying off this nation's deficit? What, what is that like? You have any idea? I think, I think it's 17, 18 trillion. I said, no. He said, then you never will. He was stimulating my thought process so that I can move into an arena of thinking that large. Mm. And how many of y'all don't mind falling a little short of trillions? Uh, am, I, am I in the right place today? Our, our, our action neighbor say, am I sitting by the wealthy or should I move? He said, you never even thought about it. Well, then you'll never will. But I have thought about paying off others' cars and have. Next move, be paying off others' houses. Glory to God. That's what the believer has been assigned to do. House the homeless. That's just not the church, this building. That's each one of us. Amen. Oh, would you just at least start thinking about it? Amen. Push the person in front of you. Say, man, get your thinking going. Get your... Turn around and say, yes, I am, but you better keep your finger <laughs> off of me, that's for sure. <clears throat> therefore, what's the therefore, therefore? <clears throat> Obviously, there was something previously spoken that qualifies the therefore to be there for a specific reason because he was previously talking about some things that they were able to acquire in Christ. So he says, well, therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if there's any comfort of love, if there's any fellowship of the Spirit, if we're connected in this, in this if there's any affection and mercy, he said, fulfill my joy by being what? Right. Having the what? Same love. Same love being on. One well, if we're going to have one mind, that certainly connotes or denotes that we're going to be thinking the same. And we should be thinking the same. That's, that's the very thing that, that joins us together. These thoughts that we have concerning life, that's how I am. I'm, I'm, I'm like-minded in such. I didn't just develop this mind on my own. I got around others who were connected in Christ. And it's amazing. The same thing I have in my life now has shown up in, the same things that have shown up in my life are the things that they had in their life. And I noticed there was an exchange of qualities. There was an exchange of qualities. When I came in, I had a pretty good life, but I didn't have the life that the person who I have, have been following for years, he will always be my man of God. 
You understand? Uh, Dede and I are jumping out of here real soon to go and see my pastor. I, I'm so looking forward to that. I don't know how some of y'all get so used to me that I'm no longer up here in your eyes. I don't know how you do that, but that's your prerogative. That's, that's up to you. I'm getting the benefit of esteeming my man of God like the scripture has commanded and everything concerning that principle is being poured over in my life and I got the fruit to show it. I'm not here to exalt my freedom, but that's the only one I know who I can talk about and won't leave the church. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> and and I'm, I'm, I'm big enough to tell you the good and the bad about Mike Freeman. Right. Got it? Yes, sir. Who said that? I said, who said that? You said that? <laughs> I would like to enter into an exchange with you. That girl jumped right up, didn't she? You, you, you look like you're ready. She stood up, got her hand up. I would, I would like to enter into exchange, an exchange with you. But it's going to cause you something. Put your hand down there because you're going to have to use them. You got any money on you? A check. I don't want check. That ain't money. Huh? You got what? Okay, but you have some, I didn't ask you how much. I said, do you have any cash on you? All right. No, no, you don't have to give her any. She got enough. And it doesn't even matter what she got. She got something. She can start this exchange. I gave, I gave people seed, and they didn't do a thing with it. We could give her money, but that doesn't mean she's going to enter into this exchange. So I asked her for two things. I asked her if she would enter into this exchange with me, and I asked her if she had any money. What you, it doesn't take much at all to get started. Would you, would you, would you take this $100 for whatever you got in your hand? What is it that you have? <laughs> <clears throat> she acted too fast on that. What is it that you had? Did she answer my question? But no, but she said less than that. I don't know. I'm not saying she's trying to be smart. I said, how much do you have? How much? $10? I just asked you if you had some money. That's a 10. That's a tithe right there. He said, give me your tithe. Woo, Jesus. Come, in, come, come on, come on, come on. Three, four, five. I, I, and you know what? Let me tell you all something. I don't care what any of you all think about what I'm doing. That's, that's, that's why I don't like coming to church, man, because all they talk about is money. Why don't you say that at the grocery store? <laughs> why don't you say that at the movie theater? Because when they charge you that $15 for that box of popcorn, you just go on and, y'all got any salt? <laughs> where the salt? Just tell me where the salt. You paying $7 for a coat? Let me have the 10. All right, I got it. Thank you. You, you can go be, be seated. I'll give it to you. Okay. That girl gave me her money. Ladies and gentlemen, tithing has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with trust. And he just uses this to reveal 
how you trust him. And you can say whatever you want to say, and you can get as mad as you want to get with me, but I didn't create this system. God created this, and he's trying to use this illustration to show you it's never been about your money. It's been about your trust. And if you can't trust him for a dime, when the doctors tell you there's no more that they can do for you, I have been told that. Okay, let's even deal with that. Where's the fruit? See, I can talk about healing. I can talk about how God, how, I, I can talk about how God will raise you up. You should listen to me anytime somebody got up off their deathbed. Rest of them just talking, and half of them shouldn't be pastoring. Calm down. <laughs> Come get this money, man. Yeah, for real. Oh, praise God. <coughs> and I'm going to give you the 10 that you gave me. You got, you got far more than you started with. Yeah, you, receive. Okay. Wait a minute, babe. Wait a minute. Would you give me that for three hundred dollars? <laughs> you done jumped in the thing like how you gonna speak for her money? <laughs> See, because when some people get something in their hand, it's like, I know what I can do with this. I can't chance. Jesus. Beginning of tomorrow. Hell hates it. The world don't understand it, but Vic Witham is rejoicing over it and saying, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The extension of the past to the future. We are in the midst of history in the making. Thank you for viewing Living by Faith. If you would like to obtain a copy of today's lesson or any other featured item, please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540. Is out there to serve me. She's serving me. That's what it's been designed to do to serve. And the least that I can do when somebody goes down, I would honor her. But we don't have to wait for one of ours to go down. We can honor them now, man. If you're ever in the Washington or Baltimore metropolitan areas, we invite you to worship with us at one of our Saturday evening or Sunday morning services. Please give us a call at 1-888-630-4540.